मेरे आवाज आ रहे हैं या ओके मैं सब लोगों को बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद देना चाहता हूँ हम हिंदी में बात कर सकते हैं बोलने में थोड़ा मुश्किल है लेकिन सब कुछ समझ रहे हैं हम बहुत कोई देख रहे हैं कि इंडिया से बाहर आया सो दैट्स अ गुड एक्सक्यूज मी टू टॉक इन इंग्लिश इन 2007 I moved all the way from Minnesota to New Delhi, and I took a corporate job. In 2008, I wanted to get my boots muddy and work for an NGO, so I moved out to Jharkhand.、Um, pretty quickly, I was able to、uh, get myself accommodation in a mud house with a farmer, and I shipped in my my Royal Enfield motorcycle from、um, from Delhi, and then I had I was pretty independent and was able to learn a lot about life in a village. And I went back to New York. In 2009, I I decided to come back to Jharkhand. And、along with three friends, we founded Yua, an NGO. Our our focus was education, and so we started making、um, free tuitions, and we started giving away school scholarships. And then something interesting happened. A group of girls decided they wanted to play football. So, little by little, these football clubs grew and grew. And after about three years, the girls captured the imagination of the entire nation by becoming the first team ever from India, girls or boys, men or women. To travel all the way to Spain and compete in football tournaments there, where they bagged a bronze medal in an international tournament. I'm going to show a three or four minute clip from that. Okay, maybe about 80-20.、Uh, how many of you played football or cricket when you were growing up, when you were children? Everybody, even a lot of women. Good. And how many of you around the time that you were preparing for your tenth board exams? We're told by your parents that you've got to stop playing and focus on your studies. Most. So it might come as, as a surprise to you, as it did to me, that, that we found out early on, we discovered early on that our girls who were playing football were actually becoming more regular students and more dedicated in their studies than our girls who we were sending to an expensive school on a on a school scholarship. And we thought, why? Then we we realized that. The girls who were playing football were coming every day. They were creating a space for themselves where it was cool to be an ambitious girl. It was unlike anywhere else in their lives. The girls who were coming on school scholarships were coming once in a month to pick up their money. If they missed 40 or 50 days of school in a year, nobody noticed and no one cared. If the girls who were playing football missed a day of practice or a day of school, their teammates noticed and their teammates cared. So to focus to to achieve our our goal of Of empowerment through education, we decided to focus on football first. Even even stranger maybe because I never really played football. I grew up playing ice hockey. My only memory of playing soccer, as we call it in in the U.S., is being a very small kid on a very big field, on very tall grass, being eaten alive by mosquitoes in Minnesota, slowly pushing a ball around with my teammates. A couple of teams like、uh, like a couple of Civil War battalions slowly moving around a battlefield. But the girls in Yuwa—they played completely different. I, I saw as I was riding my motorcycle to practice every single day, an hour before sunrise, which is when they scheduled their practices. In the beam of my headlight, I'd see all these little figures happily jogging to the field in chapels and in bare feet, and they didn't play like we played. They were tough. These girls play play football like Minnesotans play ice hockey, just as hard, just as physical, just as fast. So we've got.、Um, We've got somebody really interesting、uh, here today that I'm going to introduce you to. And in, in way of an introduction, I want to tell you kind of how she became the captain of this team that that we just talked about. One of the biggest learnings that I've had、uh, working to build up Yua is the power of rewarding people in our program, kids in our program, based on values and leadership and attitude, not on seniority, not on who's been in the program the longest. And that came from making a lot of hard mistakes in the first couple of years. So when we got a chance to take a team to Spain, we had to make a decision. We had to decide: should we, if we want to go and win this tournament or do well, should we simply take the best individual players that we have out of our 150 kids coming every single day and, and call it a, call it a day? That would have been easy. Instead, we decided to try to choose a team based on values and leadership. And so to do that. We adopted and modified a values assessment that、uh, the top university women's soccer club in the world uses. So after weeks and weeks of little girls 
shuffling around pieces of paper with each other's names on them under five different, under five different values headings and pumping these all into spreadsheets, uh, we finally came up with a short list for a team. Something else 